going to be a really really going to be a very interesting conversation and important conversation but before we start i want to uh, very we want to acknowledge that the land i am sitting on is the traditional territory of many nations including the massagas of the credit the anishinaabeg the chippewa the haudenosaunee and the vendor peoples and it's now home to many diverse nations inuit and meti people i also acknowledge that uh, scarborough where i'm from is covered by treaty 13 signed with the mississaugas of the credit and the williams treaties signed with the multiple mississaugas and chippewa bands uh, once again welcome everybody and today's topic of discussion is food policy uh, but before we jump into that i want to quickly introduce you to our uh, meal exchanges national team uh, I'm the executive director, Suman Roy. We have Brittany McGuire here. She's the senior Good Food Program Manager, and Aya, who is not here today, she's on a vacation. I'm jealous. Uh, she is the communications manager, and filling in for Aya today is Melody, uh, one of our students from Carlton, who's managing the tech. So, food policy, or in short, let's say policy overall. um what does policy really mean and why is policy so important so the first thing to understand policies are the language the document that kind of helps the government govern us overall and put everything in a framework so once they have a policy or something uh, on any of the topic may it be health may it be transportation may it be housing may it be anything then based on that policy which is approved by all parties and government different programs can take place to actually support that particular policy so when we talk about policy why do you think policy we understand policy is important to govern very good we understand that municipally federally provincially there are lots of policies that is in effect that actually helps uh, laws to come out of it or different programs coming out of it but why is policy important to post secondary students one thing we know that millennials gen z makes up the largest voting block today but despite of being one of the largest uh, population to vote our input is rarely taken in the policy or determining the future of our country and to be honest our future which does not make any sense there is people who are uh, who has probably been in post secondary schools 40 years ago or 50 years ago is now making policy what tomorrow's canada or our lives going to look like without our input that doesn't make any sense does it so i think that is why it's really important to have to us being a part of that conversation and really informing what our future is going to look like what the policies are going to look like and that is why in meal exchange for us it is one of our uh, big pillars and strategy uh, for this year and the next few years is one empowering and encouraging post secondary students to get involved in this conversation and two to actually talk to the elected official and letting them know that the students post secondary students have a voice and they want to raise the voice and they need to hear us they need to listen what we have to say and that is meal exchange's role is giving them the notice that the, the students are going to talk the students are talking and you need to listen to us we have seen across the world there is so many revolutions so many governments have been toppled by the students students have that power students have that force and we need to now use it in the framework of policy to actually inform our elected officials on what our future will look like and that is why it's really important for all of you for post secondary students to really be a part of this conversation 
Because if anybody knows what's good for us is us more than anything. And we need to voice our opinion. So that's why it's really very important to have that conversation and uh, to be a part of that conversation, to get in, engaged and involved in policy overall. But as you know, meal exchange primarily focuses on food security. So food policy is something that we will talk about uh, quite a bit, and we will actually figure out uh, how we can uh, get involved ourselves. So in the meal exchange team, we have two uh, wonderful students who have been assisting us over the last little while actually working on food policy. And uh, we have been doing some research. So we wanted to see what kind of post-secondary food policies are there across the world. So we did some research. And in Canada, it's really interesting because post-secondary education is a provincial jurisdiction. However, health could be uh, like health or food overall could be a federal jurisdiction. If we are looking for any kind of uh, financial support, most likely we're gonna get from federal than we're gonna get from for provincial. So there is two tiers of, community, of uh, actual food policies or policies we need to really look into and see what works. So we found a couple of really solid cases that I'm gonna talk about over the next uh, few minutes. Uh, one such is in Finland. So in Finland, it's really interesting that any student, uh, Finland citizens, uh, international students, exchange students, anybody get a meal subsidy in their campuses to have access to better food. Which is, think about a time when you, and I know I can talk for myself and many, many, many students who had to miss a meal because they just didn't have money. They could not go to class and, or they couldn't, they have to go to their work or class. So they can't really afford to go have some food somewhere, but Finland did it right. So they have uh, the cafeterias in, on campuses who have food available at a very reasonable price for students to have access to. And we're gonna talk a little more about this when we, we're gonna talk about the next case, which is France. France also has an amazing program where students pay one euro per meal. Can you imagine getting a wholesome meal for one euro? And you can get up to two one euro meals a day on campus. Think about it, a dollar a meal. You get a nice sandwich, salad, probably a drink or, or a fruit for one dollar. And these are cases that has proved how important it is to actually support the students in studies and in the future. So this is not unheard of. There has been some amazing work around the world on food security on post-secondary campuses. However, in Canada, we don't. It's more than 50 years ago, Canada has signed off that food will be a human right in Canada. However, we, have, we know that around 40% of post-secondary students consider themselves as severely food insecure. That means they miss a meal. How is that for a human right? Where is human right comes in place when we don't have access to the basics? So it is about time we get together and we have this conversation around a food policy. Going back last, I think it was, uh, if I remember correctly, seven, eight years ago, when uh, Prime Minister Trudeau wasn't a prime minister at that time, he was just running to be a prime minister. And the food community in uh, Canada reached out jointly to him and said, if you, we will support you provided you guarantee us that you will have a conversation around a federal food policy. And it was really a great uh, conversation. And he agreed that when he gets elected, 
you will start a conversation around uh, a national food policy. Uh, prior to that, 10 years of Prime Minister Harper, we tried a lot to have that conversation, but was never successful. The previous Prime Minister to Prime Minister Harper, Prime Minister Paul Martin, he started that conversation in his last six months of his prime ministership. And then he resigned and uh, we know what happened after that. But when Prime Minister Trudeau got elected, he did keep his promise. In his first mandate letter, he put the Canada's food policy under the Minister of Agriculture's mandate letter. So we knew something was happening, but the key conversation or the key thing to consider at that point, is this just blowing up smoke? Is it just to say that we will work on it? Or will there actually be resources allocated towards it? So that was the biggest question that we all had. One, I personally never thought that I will ever see a mandate letter from a prime minister that will actually say the word on national food policy. So I was certainly wrong and I was super excited that I was wrong. And over the first uh, four years of uh, the prime minister Trudeau, we talked a lot about food policy. He talked a lot about food policy, but it's only the last year of his first term when he actually allocated dollars to invest in a national food policy, which was once again, a very turning point in Canada's history. That now we have a federal government who's actually investing in a food policy. So three years after that, now we have over $134.4 million that the government of Canada has invested in our food policy program. Earlier this year, uh, Minister of Agriculture formed a food, food policy advisory council, and we are very much in line in working on a food policy for Canada. However, I need to put a warning out here that so far we have not seen any conversation around a food policy with post-secondary students. We have seen a lot of conversation with school food K to 12 and having a food policy for K to 12. There is a huge force of 150 organization from coast to coast to coast who are actively working to have this conversation with the federal government on having a school food policy. But so far, we do not have a conversation around post-secondary, which really boggles my mind because I think it is a no-brainer. We know the post-secondary students really need a proper food policy. This is the first time in post-secondary, in many cases, that students are finally leaving their home, leaving their parents' house, and going out on their own. So there is a lot to really understand and learn for a post-secondary students. And I feel personally that there is some role of the government to empower the students or empower the youth on with education and with learning and with uh, proper tools to actually make the right choice. And that is what we need to probably consult and give a feedback to the Minister of Agriculture, to the Prime Minister on uh, a food policy surrounding post-secondary students. But as you know, how governments work is, uh, basically it's really simple. The only time you have the years open from government officials is when there is uh, power in masses. When there is everybody talking about an issue, they want to address that issue. And unless that people are talking about it, it's not a priority for them. That's normal. Before the last federal election, I did an experiment working with five MPs across the country. And what we did was we wanted to six months coming up to the election, I wanted them to track on how many uh, community members or residents in their community actually are calling their offices around food and hunger and food security. And I chose these five MPs in areas across the country where there is severe food insecurity, according to data. And surprisingly, 
only 1.7% of the calls that came in was around food, which boggles my mind. So what that tells me is though people are going hungry, people understand there is issue, but they do not really recognize that the government has a role to play in making a difference. And if there is one thing that all you students can take out of today's session, that one thing is government has full jurisdiction on what you eat, how you eat, and what your future and health looks like. In the beginning of your life, in the beginning of your career, if you are actually eating well and focusing on proper food and proper nutrition, probably the government is going to spend a lot less in healthcare 40 years from now, 50 years from now, because your foundation is built. The government has that power to actually train, actually teach, and invest in proper food systems. And if anybody can make that call or make the government listen, it is you students. You need to actually come out and get involved in this conversation around Canada's food policy. So we as Meal Exchange will certainly try to lead that conversation. But we cannot do it just as an organization. We need all you students to back us up and be there with us. Now, what should be in that food policy? What should Canada's post-secondary food policy look like? If you ask me, I have some very distinct ideas. However, it is not your ideas. And if anybody can decide or anybody can contribute to what a food policy for you looks like, it should be you. It shouldn't be me. So that is why over the next year uh, in meal exchange, we are going to focus a lot in various levels of uh, consultation with students to really lo look at what we are going to propose to either the provincial governments or the federal government in what the food policy will look like. Does that mean we are asking for subsidies? Do we want to be something like uh, France or uh, Finland where the food is subsidized for students, uh, good healthy food? Or are we looking at uh, curriculum around food security and food and knowledge of food in colleges and universities so students can actually be educated? I don't know. And I think that is where it's really important to get all of your all of you involved and conversations around with all of you to actually give him your input in what do you think should be a food policy for post-secondary students that's going to help the post-secondary students. So I will actually, before we, so we have a food policy, we're going to have a jam board and I'm going to let Brittany go through this. However, I'm going to take two minutes before we do that to see if anybody has any questions. We, have a, we don't have a large group here, we have a smaller group. So I'm going to say, if you have any questions that from what I spoke, please unmute yourself and ask. Anybody? I was just going to say, Melody, maybe um, we could stop recording at this time so people feel, can feel confident if they want to take their video off and ask any questions uh, and your questions won't be recorded. 